Hi, Adam Bazalgette here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, golf drills, and we're going to look at three putting drills that I think will really help you. One with the way you set up, one with the way you stroke, and one with just stability and maintaining an even keel there as you hit your putt. So hopefully these will be helpful for you. Let's tackle it. So very briefly before we get started, if you're new to the channel or perhaps you've watched the videos before but you've never subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you do that. That way we can get you more and more of the content we've planned as well as a lot of other past content. Also hit that little bell, then you'll be notified every time a new video is coming your way. Thanks. All right, Charles Howell on the left there, Luke Donald on the right. Luke Donald's playing a breaking putt, so he's aiming about here. But what we'll notice a couple of things, the line across the forearms is very much parallel to the line they're trying to hit the putt on. Charles hitting more of a straight putt there, again, very much parallel. That is an important line. If you get that twisted or out of sorts, it will affect your stroke. The other thing we'll notice is more or less the shaft is at the angle of the forearms. It may be slightly under the bottom of the forearms, as in Charles' case there, but you get those lined up, the shaft and the forearms, it stabilizes the wrists a lot. Have a free three-part course on short game secrets down in the description box. Feel free to pick that up while it's available. Let's get outside and have a look. How important is the grip in golf? Very important. You've got to be able to hinge your wrist, square the club, manage all the speed in the club, but that's not the case in putting. So the one exception in some senses as to how important the grip is, is putting, believe it or not. All we're really trying to do is link our hands or link our arms, if you like, to the golf club. Now, here's a couple of things, though, that you do want to do. No matter what you do with your grip, whether it's multiple overlap, fingers down, left hand low for the right hand of golf or whatever it is, hold the club up about just below chest high like I'm doing. Look down, your forearms should feel very, very level. If one's sitting higher than the other, that's not good. That's going to affect your stroke path. So look down, make sure whatever you do, your forearms are pretty level. And you want to be able to do that without any major manipulation. So if that right hand's high, Again, for the right-handed golfer, put it back against the fingers of the left hand, etc. One little thought also, claw grip. Some people are having a lot of success with this. They sometimes can really stretch this trail arm. So you just make sure that's softer and set there. So again, you get a fairly level kind of a look across your forearms. Finally, droop your wrists just a little bit. Let them arch downwards. It firms them up and it helps get that line between shaft and club face. Make sure though when you get your wrists down there or you get your wrists up there is what I should say that you don't add tension and do this. Just wrists like that. Get those lines and you're off to a good start. So setting up our next drill, we want a putting stroke where everything, that is to say upper trunk, arms and club work more or less together. That's an old Justin Rose there. And if you look at, let me put a line up his golf club there. Let's go to the end of his backstroke about there. We'll put another line and the end of his follow through and another line. You'll notice they meet at about the same point up here. So that means he hasn't introduced wrist cock or any unwanted wrist action in that. Get everything working together. You will be a more consistent putter. Okay, we've got to keep those arms and hands passive. Again, not, not necessarily no feel in them. I feel the club, but they're passive in terms of creating energy. So one quick thought before I show you the drill, I don't recommend thinking shoulders. They're up at the top corners of your body. I see a lot of tension, a lot of awkwardness, sometimes rocking, etc. excessively when people do that. Use your upper trunk muscles. You feel it how you like. Could it be your chest, even down at your core here, or perhaps your upper back? That's what you're looking for. So take a small towel and fold it over and just put that under your upper arms and make a few strokes. Now, caution number one, don't jam your arms up and create tension. Just resting, shoulders down in their sockets, just holding the towel gently and make a few strokes. You'll pretty soon start to feel whether your core is working, your interior, or if you're just moving your arms around. Now listen, in a really big putting stroke, if you had 50, 60 feet, you'll probably feel those upper arms slide slightly on the rib cage as the momentum picks up. But the genesis of motion, again, needs to be the upper trunk if you're going to have passive hands. So put the towel under there, hit some putts. Let's try one here. No target, ideally, even though I do have a hole over there. Now, as I hit that putt, here's a big thought. You know, when you, people do drills, 
Just a sidebar here for a second. When people do a drills, they buy a little gizmo for their wrist or whatever, and they kind of think it's like get on the treadmill. If I get on a treadmill and I could watch the news or look at my phone, as long as I'm doing it, I'm getting some good out of it. That may be true on the treadmill. It doesn't work with drills. The only way these things are going to help you at all, not just this drill, whatever drill, is if, first off, it's an appropriate drill for you. Secondly, if you pay attention with your mind, what are the things I'm experiencing and feeling? In this case, chest, arms, relationship to chest. What am I experiencing here? Get rid of the drill object. How does that compare with what I normally do? Start to pick up some clues. So you've got to have an attentive mind. Yes, not just like get on the treadmill and 10 minutes later you've burned off a few calories. Pay attention to it and go back to the drill and you get a lot of good out of it. Okay, drill number three, the stalk drill, is to help stabilize the lower body, give you a nice stable base there so you can use your top but not move around with your lower body. It's the stalk drill, basically standing on one foot. Now, pretty difficult to do that, so we're going to put this trail foot back and barely balance on the toe. You'll have to shuffle around with your feet a little bit to find your relationship to the ball, but we need this foot back so that that knee is about in line with that knee. Let's have a look from the front angle at how the drill works. All right, here we go. So there's my left foot. I've dropped that right foot back. As little pressure on that as possible. Just enough to stabilize me a little bit. Make some practice strokes first. And again, you want to feed off what you did with that towel. Can I move freely here, but experience minimal, mil minimal change of balance in that foot that you're standing on? If you can do that, you have properly separated your upper body from your lower body. Let's try it here. That felt pretty good. Now you might even try it on just one foot if you're a bold person there, but that's pretty difficult. Now here's the thing again, as I said with the previous drill, you've got to pick up clues and feel when you do this and compare it with what happens in your real stroke. So once you've done this pretty well and you feel like, hey, I can hardly feel any wobble in that lead foot, take a normal stance, get that motion going, and just see how quiet your feet feel, how quiet your hips feel. You get these ideas into your putting game, I tell you, you will help yourself. I hope that's helpful for you with golf drills, three drills for putting. Put these into practice, you will become a better putter. Would love it if you'd hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. That's a help to us, gives us a little momentum here at the channel. Love to hear from you. Thanks so much.